Hey guys, in this video I just wanted to share with you guys how a simple atom has evolved through my years of high school. Initially they were saying that an atom is a smallest particle of a chemical element that can exist, uh, representing it as a spherical ball shaped looking thing here, and at that point I was like, okay this is going to be super super easy. And then they started introducing things like the nucleus, which is the central part of the atom, which is surrounded by orbiting electrons. Uh, going into a bit more depth, the nucleus contains protons and neutrons, um, surrounded by, again, electrons, protons having a charge of plus one, electrons having a charge of negative one, and neutrons having no charge at all. Atoms are always fundamentally uh, chargeless, so therefore proton number and electron number have to always balance out to neutralize the charge. Uh, they were also saying that uh, most of the mass of the atom is made up of protons and neutrons, having a relative mass of one and one each, electrons being virtually weightless, has a relative weight of zero. So things are getting a little bit more complicated. Uh, specifically regarding the electrons, uh, electrons are held inside shells apparently, and each shell has differing amount of maximum electrons that it can hold. The most inner shell contains up to two electrons, uh, the second shell up to eight, and the third shell they were saying when I was taking IGCSE up to eight electrons as well, not only um, and then I found out that it was basically very, very wrong. That is not the case. Uh, so after finishing IGCSC, I got into my next year and they were talking about these things called orbitals. And at that point, I was sort of like, okay, what the hell are these orbitals? They look very, very weird. So orbitals, there are three types of orbitals. orbitals sorry, the, the S orbital is a spherical shaped orbital that can hold up to two electrons. The p orbital actually has three suborbitals, and each of these suborbitals that have varying directions can hold up to two electrons. Having three suborbitals, uh, the p orbital can hold up to six electrons in total. The d orbital similarly has five suborbitals holding two electrons each, so a maximum capacity of ten electrons. So we learnt that the shell, the first shell, contains an s orbital, and an s orbital can hold up to two electrons as we saw before, and therefore the first shell can only hold up to two electrons. The second shell uh, has an s and a p orbital, and it all makes sense now because an s orbital can hold up to two electrons, and a p orbital can hold up to six, so therefore two plus six is eight. The maximum capacity of electrons of the second shell is 8 electrons. The third shell contains S, P and D and this is why initially they were saying, uh, initially they were wrong in saying that it can hold up to 8 elect electrons because now we know that an S and a P orbital can hold up to 8 in total and if you add the D orbital which can hold up to 10, the total uh, is 18 electrons. The third shell can hold up to 18 electrons, not 8. Now, electrons actually prefer to be filled from the lower energy levels first. So what the hell are energy levels? Energy levels are sort of in this in this uh, direction here, whereby the first shell or the first orbital, s orbital, has the lowest, lowest energy level and it sort of progresses up as we go up in shell. Um, so the electrons actually fill from the most inner shell, the first s orbital, then it fills the second s orbital, it goes to the second p orbital, going to the third uh, s orbital, then the third p orbital, and then making its way to the four s orbital, and so forth, in this diagonal sort of direction here. So just to summarize things, summarize things, sorry, we initially started off with this spherical ball looking thing that they used to call an atom until they introduced this here whereby the nucleus contains protons and neutrons surrounded by orbiting electrons. Apparently electrons are held inside shells that have certain maximum capacities. Uh, the first shell, the most inner shell, can hold up to two electrons uh, and the, the reason for the different capacities is because these shells are made up of subshells called orbitals and the orbitals actually have, or are the ones that are containing the electrons, the s orbitals, up to two electrons can be held in here, p orbitals have three different suborbitals containing up to two electrons each, d orbitals have five suborbitals containing up to two electrons each as well, so therefore the s orbitals two electrons maximum, p orbitals six electrons maximum, d orbitals 
10 electrons maximum and electrons actually start by filling the lower energy levels first and in this diagonal pattern here um, filling up each of these sub or each of these orbitals that lie inside the electron shells and this gives rise to different electron configurations. So that was just my take on how uh, you know the the atom or the structure of the atom has progressed over my years of high school. Thanks guys, I'll see you in the next video.